So let's build the whole thing in Houdini. And for this example, I just want to generate a few lines using a bunch of circles. While for the preview rendering, I scattered a few points on a 3D scan. The general setup, however, does not depend on that. So let's drop down a geo node, dive in there and start out laying down a circle which will set its orientation to the ZX plane so it faces upwards and set its type to the polygon with 24 divisions. Let's copy this one, paste it and let's move it up like so and let's merge those two circles together. So we have this here. Now let's add an add sop and make sure we delete everything but only keep the points. So we end up with those individual points. And to just generate a few random lines connecting those individual points, we could either use the connect adjacent pieces set this to adjacent points and maybe increase the search radius while maybe decreasing the maximum search points to something like this. Or we could write a bit of vex. And if you know me, you know I love my vex. So let's just as a quick exercise do that. And what I want to do in here is I want to run this over points and for each point, let's maybe generate 10 or 20 lines. So using a for loop, which we're going to run for say 10 times, we're gonna pick a random point number, call this one NPT. So that's a random value. Let's use our current points number plus our iteration value, maybe times some seed value like this, just to generate a random number. And let's fit this to be between zero and our maximum number of points minus one. So this will generate a random integer number between zero. And in this case, as it's two rings of 24 points, so between zero and 47, corresponding with our point numbers, which range from zero to 47, as we can see here, zero is the first 47 the last point. Next, let's add a new primitive. To our current geo stream which is a line called polyline and which contains our current point number and the NPT we just generated as endpoints. So we end up with this bunch of lines connecting those points together. So we got our initial lines here. Next, for the step when I'm building my density map, I need some sort of grid and a three dimensional grid in Houdini is called a volume. So let's generate a volume. And I want to make sure that this volume is big enough to contain all my geometry. So I'm using a bounding box here, just a bounce up, which will generate this bounding box, which I'll then feed into an ISO offset to generate an old school Houdini volume. Let's say with a sampling division of 100 or maybe 200 units. Let's call this one density. And immediately this volume is filled with non-zero values as can be seen by this fog here. However, let's use a volume wrangle to make sure that this density value is set to zero everywhere like so. Next, as we want to repeat this algorithm over and over again, let's use a solver SOP. We could also put this into a for loop if we don't care for animation. However, I want this to be moving. So on the one hand, I will input those lines here into my solver, it goes into the first slot and the volume will go into my second slot. Let's highlight the solver and dive in there. First thing in the solver, let's just drop down a switch just for the very first frame to check that we work directly on the data we're piping into the solver and not on our previous frames data by in a switch checking if our current frame number is exactly equal to one. And if it is so, we're switching to input one. Then I would like to resample those lines each step to make sure that their individual points are spaced apart evenly using a resample node. And in this case, let's dial down the length to say 0 0.005. So really finally subdivided here. Also on this node, make sure to check curve U attribute, which will spit out an attribute ranging from zero on the first point of a line to one on the last point of a line. Because we're going to use this in a group expression to put the first and the last point of our line into a group that we are fixing so that we're not moving. Let's call this group fixed. It's going to be a point group. And I want to put in every point that's got either a curve U value that is equal to zero or a curve U value that's equal to one. We can see we now fix those individual endpoints of our lines. Next, let's rasterize those points into our volume and build the density map. Let me tell you, I tried out different things here. I went so far as to code this in VEX and tried coding it in OpenCL. However, there is a built-in node in Houdini that is really fast and does take care of this. And it's called the 
rasterized particles. That's even faster than the rasterized points. It takes a base volume, which we're piped in through our second input slot, that's this one here, and it takes in a bunch of points, which it will rasterize. Before we highlight this, let's just dial back our particle scale, in my case to 0 0.075, and this is one of the values that become important later, and I'll explain it then. For now, let's stick to this value, and maybe highlight this here to see what it does. And you can see it kind of fills this volume. We could drop down a volume slice to kind of visualize the density here. So yeah, it's doing its job. Let's delete that. Then as I mentioned, I want to blur this slightly to make advection a bit smoother. So I'm gonna use a volume blur, which I'll set to use the voxel radius of two and have this run four times. So again, let's append the volume slice. You can see with and without the blur. Finally, I want to calculate the gradient of this volume, which in this case is not done using the measure sop, but using the volume analysis which we're gonna to set to gradient. Okay, that's everything we need to do on the volume, that's on our density grid. And now I want to use this grid to advect those points coming in here. Again, using a point wrangle, points go into the first slot, density grid goes into the second slot, and I want to make sure to run this over everything but the fixed point group, so that the fixed points will not be affected by this wrangle here. First thing I wanna do is I want to read in the value from this volume here, which is closest to each of those points that we're working on. So we're gonna read in a vector, let's call it grad for gradient, and use the volume sample v for volume sample vector function. Let's just hit F1 on this and read the help card for this. So this needs a geometry, in this case, the slot with the number one, it's this one here, either a primitive number for which volume to read from or a volume name and the position where in the volume it should look for a value. Okay, second input slot is the slot with the number one. Let's just use the volume name, which should still be density. And let's look it up at our current point position. Let's just middle mouse on this one. Yeah, our gradient is still called a density. Next, I want to check the length of my gradient. So if I have very small gradients in areas where my density does not change much, I don't want to advect my points. So let's check if the length, and let's use the square length because that's quicker to calculate. So if the square length of our gradient vector is bigger than say 0 0.00001, so if it's bigger than a small number, then let's normalize it. Like this. And if we have a really small gradient length, then we set the gradient to zero. And finally, we advect our points by just adding our gradient times, let's call this, advection strength, that's just a multiplier for our gradient, just a scaling factor. So we add our scaled gradient to our position. Let's just create a slider for this advection strength here and set it to 0.002. And you can see already a bit of movement happening in there. Finally, let's blur this using an attrib blur. And again, we do this just to smooth out a bit jaggies here. I wanna uncheck pin border points. However, I only want to run this over everything but our fixed group. So anything that's not in our fixed group. And I had quite good success with 16 iterations on this. And finally, let's append a null which we're gonna call out. Let's go up one level, save this, keep our fingers crossed, maybe toggle real time and hit play to simulate this. So already you can see this is working kind of nicely. However, there is one last major or minor, depending how you look at it, trick to improve the setup a bit, which is taken straight from the paper. Because what the authors do here is they vary, when we go into the solver, to the volume rasterized particles here, they vary the particle scale with which the particles are rasterized into this volume. So in the beginning you can see, especially again, let's use a volume slice here, you can see these individual lines are rather thick and that comes from this value here, which is somewhere in between thick and thin. And this causes the graph to never actually quite settle because we can always advect and always blur out a bit at the end. So this will always move. However, what the authors do of this paper is they over time, they reduce this particle scale here by just multiplying it with a factor ranging from 0.5 to 0.9 in their paper each step. So let's do this too. And for this factor, let's go up one level. Before we head into the solver here, I want to drop down an atrib wrangle which I'm gonna to set to detail. And let's just save this particle scale. Let's call it raster scale. 
Let's just say this as a detail attribute here. Wire this in here before we go into the solver. Let's just middle mouse on this to check. Yes, we've got this raster scale here. So in the solver, instead of directly writing a value down here, I want to use a small expression, namely the detail expression, looking at this detail attribute that we just wrote out. And we could use any of those nodes upstream here. So let's just point it to this node here, just like a standard path. How did I call the attribute raster scale? Okay. And an index of zero. So now that results in the same number because we haven't changed it yet. However, what we want to do each step after we did all of our operations, we want to reduce this number. So again, let's drop down an attribute wrangle, set this to run over detail, and let's multiply our raster scale times a factor, which we're going to use a slider to set up. like this. This goes in here and let's drag this down and dial in a value of say 0 0.98. That's a value with which I had good success. All right, highlight this, go up one level, save this. And again, let's re-simulate. And that's making me almost happy. Just almost because back here we can see those graphs are starting to be torn apart again. And this took me a while to diagnose. It actually comes from this attrib blur down here. So when we do not affect the graph at all anymore, this attribute blur will still blur out those individual positions of our graph. So it'll still try to move them apart again. So what we have to do is in our point wrangle before where we check how big the gradient is, we have to check that if our gradient is really small here, we also put this point, which is at a position of a really, really tiny gradient value into our fixed group as well. So it does not get attribute blurred afterwards as well. So let's just add an expression here and put it in our group fixed equals one. And that's just a shorthand for our set point group. Let's reset this, go up one level and re-simulate. And now I'm getting exactly that behavior that I was expecting. So this is the basic setup. One good idea might be to expose some of the parameters of that setup onto our solver. So let's do that by clicking on this cogwheel symbol here, going to edit parameter interface, which pops out this massive window here. So let's just be nice and uh, drop down a separator first here and then dive into our solver. And let's expose our resample length here. Let's expose our volume blur radius and number of passes. Down here, let's expose the advection strength, the Laplacian blurring iterations to smooth out our lines and also the particle scale attenuation. Let's hit apply and accept. Again, going up one level and you might want to rename this or group this with separators or even folders to make it a bit easier for our user to use. But that's the basic setup. And as I mentioned for the preview image for this video, all I did is load up a 3D scan that Manu kindly provided me with, selected a few areas on the scan, scattered a few points in there with the same VEX code, generated those lines, and then just adapted them using the exact same technique. So in my opinion, a highly fun technique, a really nice paper to read. Again, I will link to it. As always, I'm excited to see what you guys cook up with this setup. And if you can't get enough of this kind of stuff here, you might want to consider supporting us on Patreon, also to gain access to more in-depth courses, and to everyone supporting us on Patreon already. Thanks so much, guys. This is what kind of makes this all possible. With a very special thank you going out to Parasol Island, Gearbox Studio Quebec, Encore VFX, Important Looking Pirates, Rafik Anadol, Chris Hebert, and Nathan Wilson. Thanks so much, guys. And as always, it's cheers, and see you next time.